With the looming release of AMD's brand new chipsets, we are finally taking the wraps off some of these new X870 and X870 eBoards. First one is this one from Gigabyte. This is the X870 Aorus Elite Wi-Fi 7 ICE, a fully white motherboard. Something you guys have been asking for for a very, very long time. So let's do our usual thing. Let's uh, do a bit of an overview. And remember guys, this is not a review. It's just an overview so I can show you guys what comes in the box and what's physically on the board. Because at the time of filming this video, we're still not allowed to show performance numbers. Let's do a motherboard thing. This video is brought to you by VIPSCDKey.com. Have you ever installed Windows 11 only to see the watermark of death? You don't need to fork out a couple of hundred dollars for a key. You can grab one from today's video sponsor from VIPSCDKey.com for a tenth of the price. You can use our code GEAR to get 30% off for this month only. How good is that? That takes that already cheap Windows 11 key and makes it even cheaper. It's easy as placing your order. Bingo bango. You've got your new key on your orders page. You chuck that key into the activation screen and you're good to go. No more watermark of death. Use code GEAR to get 30% off for this month only. Link in the description. On with the video, back to you, Nick. All right, here it is, ladies and gents, the Gigabyte X870 Aorus Elite Wi-Fi 7 ICE. Let's get that motherboard out of the way so we can take a bit of a closer look at all of the things that come with this brand new X870 AMD chipset motherboard. And there's some interesting stuff going on here. First of all, we've got a SATA or SATA cable for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rust drives. And the Keynote out there will notice that these are fully white cables. That's the whole thing with these ice boards. Everything is all white. Something that I thought was really interesting with the documentation is it shows us the entire X870E and X870 lineup for Gigabyte's boards from the bottom all the way to the top. And it looks as though most of these do include Wi-Fi 7 as well. Next up, we've got this little Aorus badge. You know how I feel about these. These are great because... Believe it or not, these do add performance depending on where you put them on your case. Not really, guys. Come on. This is an old joke now. Come on now. We've got the G connector. This is for all your front panel cables and switches and everything to let you know your system's on and to turn your system on. This is good because essentially what this does is it combines all your cables into a single connector to make it easier to plug in when you're building your PC. And lastly is this. This is a new Wi-Fi 7 antenna with a new connector on it. It's a single connector, so you don't need to screw in antenna connectors anymore. It just clips in and bobs your uncle, bobs your dad's uncle's cousin's brother's father, and you're good to go. Let's unsheath that new board, and we'll take a closer look at all of the things on this board. One thing I will say is all the connectors are white. Speaking of, we've got the front panel audio connector. There's two five volt three pin addressable RGB headers. There's a TPM header, which you don't really need to use because it's built into the CPU. There's three four pin PWM fan headers for your fans. There's two USB 2.0 headers for things like RGB controllers and really for legacy things. We're not really using these headers much anymore. There's three more PWM fan headers for fans and the front panel connector for all your lights and all your switches to turn on your system and to let you know it's on. Next up on the right hand edge of the board, we've got a right angled USB 3.2 header. There's four SATA ports or SATA ports for your 2.5 inch SSDs or those old spinning rust drives. There's also a USB type C header. Now there's a right angled HDMI port. There's also a 24 pin power connector and there's a white debug LED screen. And on the board itself, there is a debug LED array as well. There's also more RGB headers in the top right hand side of the board. There's a three pin five volt addressable RGB header, a four pin 12 volt RGB header, there's a reset button and a power button up there as well. And two more PWM fan headers. One's typically used for the CPU fan and the other is used for a liquid cooler. There's two eight pin EPS power connectors on the top left hand side of the board. And that is to send power to your Ryzen 7000, 8000 or 9000 AM5 CPU. As far as PCIe slot layout, this board has one PCIe Gen 5 by 16 slot. There's another by 16 size slot, which is a PCIe Gen 4 by 4 slot. And then one right down the bottom, which is a PCIe Gen 3 by 2 slot. The VRM layout on this board is a digital twin 16 plus 2 phase VRM layout. 
Now, the 16 phases are actually an 8 plus 8 parallel phase layer. As you can see here, the whole IO cover is a giant heatsink, and there's another giant heatsink along the top edge of the board as well. So VRM cooling looks to be adequate. Because this is an X870 board, it does feature the AM5 socket, and you can see it's got standard cooler mounting here. If we pop the socket open, you can see what a whole bunch of pins that you need to be careful with, which is pretty standard. And this is just showing you the inside of the socket, just in case you've never seen one before. On the back side of the board, you can see that the PCB is gray and not white. And to be honest, there's not really that much going on back here, but I do like to show you what's going on back there. RAM is a bit interesting on this board, four DDR5 DIMM slots, but it supports up to 256 gigs of RAM in total. So it does support those new 64 gigabyte modules. For storage, there is something pretty interesting going on other than this fully toolless setup for installing drives. We'll just pull the heat sinks off here so you guys can get a bit of an idea of how to get these off. They're all spring loaded clips, but the most interesting thing here is You'll see there's labels on the connectors on each of the slots now. Now the one I'm pointing at here does not have a label which denotes it's PCIe Gen 4. But taking a closer look at the rest of the slots, it now has labels for the M.2 slots that are PCIe Gen 5. I think this is pretty cool and pretty interesting and a simple way for you guys to know which slot does what. In terms of rear I.O., there's a Q flash button. There's the new Wi-Fi antenna connector. It's a single connector that just clips in and it's a very easy connector to use. There's four USB 2.0 ports. There is a whole bunch of USB 3.2 ports. I'm gonna say that the blue ones are going to be five gig. The red ones are 10 gig. You'll also notice there's an HDMI port. There's also two USB 4.0 ports. These also support DisplayPort Alt. There's 2.5 gigabit ethernet, a line out jack, a microphone jack, and SPDIF slash optical output. I hope you guys enjoyed this first look and overview of this brand new board from Gigabyte. What I find interesting is like, this is not a review. This is just an observation that you guys will notice too, right? All of the surface mount components on this board are white. Well, at least everything they could make white. I don't know why they didn't do the battery holder white for the for CMOS battery. That could have easily been white, but I think they've gone to a completely different level of white here. RGB connectors are white. Even the debug LED, white. The 24 pin power connector, white. Dim slots, white. Everything on this board is white. Other than all the heat sinks on the board, that's typically for thermals. Other than the look of this board, X870 itself isn't that different from X670. And that's kind of the point. In fact, if we take a look at X870 on paper, we're getting less PCIe lanes. And that's just a fact. That's not something that they're hiding. This is just part of the specification for X870. And X870E is going to be a little bit more interesting for the enthusiasts out there. This is kind of, uh, I, I can't say that because that's under embargo. <laughs> One thing that I thought was really nice with this board, just taking a look at it from face value was, Gigabyte's decided to label which of the M.2 slots are PCIe Gen 5, which is something that we haven't seen directly on the connector itself, so that is nice. They did do this with the initial launch of PCIe Gen 5 with having a round key for PCIe Gen 3 or Gen 4 and a square key for PCIe Gen 5, but it's just easier if they label that kind of stuff. If you guys are wondering where we've been for the past week and why we hadn't released any videos, we're in China on a motherboard factory tour taking a look at how all of these new boards are made. So we've got a little bit of insight for all of that coming very, very soon, but Right now, we can't share any of that information because that's just how it works in this industry, ladies and gents. We can't always show you everything that you want to see. In terms of pricing for this, no idea. We basically got the go ahead from AMD to make these type of videos for you guys nice and early before the sales embargo, which will be the 30th of September, which happens to be a much more important day for us than some more AMD boards. Let us know what you guys think of X870. 
I mean, it's another chipset for some CPUs that are already out. I don't know why AMD has staggered this launch. It's strange to me, considering from all the other Ryzen generations, well, most of them, we've seen new motherboards and CPUs at the same time. Very odd. Definitely very AMD thing to do.